charge, Eddie. Oh, I don't know how. Well, you're going to be student body president next year's time you learn. Well, are you coming to orchestra rehearsal? Not right now. But well, we've got some new tunes. Well, that's a while. You give them the downbeat. Don't let anybody play with drums. Larry, you haven't okay the program for the dance yet. You think that's all I got time to do? Hey, I'll see you later. Hey, Larry, can I, uh... Yeah, here, here. Two bits. That's six bucks you owe me this month. Larry, can I go home with you? Yeah, sure. sure. Thanks, that's Larry. That's a while. Come on. Come on. What's on your mind? What? Well, come on, what you shove me in here for? Just... See, are you trying to be funny? What's the answer? What answer? The dance, the prom. Oh. oh. The answer's off for Pinkerton. That slug, you're going with him? Well, when I go to a dance, I go there to dance, not to watch you play drums. Oh, if that's all that's worrying you. I got Joe all broken in. I can get away any time. Who gave you that? What? The pin. I... I guess you do. Well, then who takes you to the dance? I guess you do. You know I do. Hey, remember me? The, the, yeah, it's gonna be all right. You ask the teacher, and I'll go home and tell your mother, step aside by the police. Grand, grand, grand. Step aside. You over see it. Hey, come here. What do you want? I want to show you something. Hey, look at this problem that I worked up. And I didn't need any help from you. What is it? Why, it's qualitative analysis. It's all wrong. Huh? This is the way you do it. You'll never get oh. to my point that way. Larry, oh no. Yeah. Look, come here. Yeah. Look, that's you, me, and Parade. Uh, well, boys, studying chemistry after all? <laughs> that's unheard of. Oh, not exactly chemistry, Mr. Benson. Mind if I look at this? No. Oh, beautiful place, West Point. Oh, yes, sir. Can I show you? Look, go ahead, show me. <laughs> This is Bill and I in parade. We hope. <laughs> you think you can both pass the entrance exam? Oh, we have to. Mm. I don't dare not pass. No? No, he'd meet mayors off if I didn't. <laughs> Yet 75% of the boys that are appointed to the academy failed to get in, I've heard. Well, it has to be tough to get in, all right, and, and to stay in. Mm. You see, the army wants only the best, and... Mm. Well, uh, we, we mm. aren't the, the... You've eaten and... Dreamed and slept and lived West Point all through high school, haven't you? Oh, yes, yes sir. sir. Ever since I was about that high. I can remember where Dad started me. Uh, I'm betting on you, Lawrence. And I'm betting on you, too, William. You know something, Mr. Benson? If I ever get into West Point, uh, it'll be on account of Larry Kelly. Are you boys going to stick together? Like that. Uh, that's it. The best of luck to you both. Thank you. You've been swelled up, too. Oh, yeah. Come on, let's get over the stadium. Come on. You'll get in the way. There we are, marching by the reviewing stands at the head of our companies, Lieutenant William Davis and Lieutenant Lawrence Kelly. And the president's in the reviewing stand. The band's playing. Oh, there's thousands of people. Then we salute. Can you see it? I, I, I can't see myself in a lieutenant's uniform. Maybe a corporal. What do I have to do? Go to work on you again? Now, look, we've got a big job to do. We'll be running this country in a few years. This country's done a lot for us. Now, we've got to do all we can for our country. What did Lord Nelson say? He said, England expects every man to do his duty. Well, we're not English, but that goes for any American, too. Only the break we get is that we'll be trained when the time comes for us to do our duty. You get it? Yeah. Hello, Ma. I'm home. I'd never guess it. Got some ginger butter something I'm hungry. And you're not going to spoil your dinner. Oh, I'm just, just a little bit. Yeah. I've got a surprise for you. What? Your father's here. No kidding. Dad, where is he? Hey, Pa! No, he's not here now. Where is he? Where'd he go? I don't know. Come over here and sit down. I didn't know your father was coming, or I'd have told you. He planned it as a surprise for both of us. 
Same old Dan. Yes. He's... He's going to live with us. All the time, from now on. You mean it? Mm -hmm. But he doesn't like our apartment. What's the matter with him? It isn't big enough for your father. Well, Dad always did need a lot of elbow room. Yes. <laughs> you don't seem very happy about it, Mom. Why, why, of course I'm happy. It's just that it, well, it was a surprise. Yeah, it was, but... Oh, gee, I'm dying to see him. wonder what he is. Did he have a big car? Big limousine. That's it, huh? Yes. Hey, Pop! Pop! Hey, Pop! <laughs> hey, Tim! Why don't you get off your face? Pull it! Pull it! Oh, Come on, pull it! At ease. <laughs> <Pull it on. laughs> That's the first time you've done that to me in five years. You didn't have that five years ago. You kind of spread out yourself since I last seen you. Yeah, a little bit. Is that so? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've been taking good care of Mom? Yes, sir. Remember him, you know? Yes, sir. And a surprise seeing the old man after so long? Mm, yes, sir. Any complaints? No, sir. Okay, General. <laughs> and you've been living in this here dump ever since you come out. <laughs> but, Tim, you... Okay, Mom. Go on and get your hat. But, Tim, I have to get dinner. We're moving out. What? Are you having an argument the first time I've seen you in five years? Tim, Mom, ain't you told him? I told him you're here to stay. Sure. Living with you two now. Sold out, quick, retire. From now on, the old man's a gentleman of leader. Let's get started. Go on, Mom, get your hat. Wait till you see it. What a surprise. What is it? Say, could you play them things? Sure, all of them. Got my own band, too. Ah! <laughs> Come on, everybody out. End of the line. Hey, Pop. You know who lives here? Oh, yeah, blocking the traffic. Wait till you see the inside. Pop, this is great. You like it? Terrific. You never seen the old man action before, did you, General? I said to the real estate agent, I want the finest place in town. This is it. How much is that? Eighty thousand at least. Seventy-five for that. I got a seventy-eight and a half. You bought it, furnished. I had a block of service. Got everything set. <laughs> That's how Mr. Kelly works. Oh, where did you see the bathtub? You can wash an elephant in it. Yeah, and no cracks about my finger either. Go on, go on, go upstairs, go upstairs. Look at the last room in the back. It's yours. Mine's there. Oh! <laughs> Always wanted to place your own, didn't you, Mom? What's your name? Stephen, sir. Miss Kelly Stephen. What do you think of it, Mom? Well, it'll take me a little while to get used to it. Ah, go on. This is the kind of place you belong in. <laughs> Stephen, that's the general. That's me. Say, Pop, the room is swell. I got the drums all spotted. Oh, great place to rehearse the band. <laughs> sure, put the brass section right up in the back. <laughs> Say, Pop, did Mom tell you? Nobody told me nothing. You didn't tell him? Oh, come here. You don't know yet? Look. Next door, next door lives the girl that was, well, her brother. He and I are pals, and we're going to West Point together, aren't we, Ma? Judge Davis's children, Tim. That's their house. A judge's daughter. <laughs> nice going, General. Your mother always wanted you to meet just the best people. Now run along over, tell your gal that we just moved in here. Say, hustle up back. Yes. Hey, you mom's got a lot to talk about. Came over to tell you not to play your radio after nine o'clock and don't come down the street with that car wide open. Things are gonna have to be a little more quiet around this neighborhood. What's the big idea? The big idea is I'm moving in. No! Yeah, Dad just bought the house next door. And don't forget what the president says. Love your neighbors. What's this I hear? Oh, hello. Dad just bought the Prentice house next door. I had no idea your father was such a wealthy man. <laughs> Neither did I. Won't you come over and say hello to him? Uh, I think not. I'm sure your parents would rather not be disturbed the first day in your new home. Uh, you'll extend my greetings to I'll extend them. Yes, we'll extend them. Not now. 
Uh, goodbye, Lord. So long. Gee, isn't that swell? Oh, great. So Lawrence Kelly's father is a very wealthy man. Well, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it, as long as you don't develop extravagant ideas. You will continue to live simply and sanely as you have in the past. And I don't want to hear you asking for things you can't afford, simply because Lawrence Kelly's father may buy them for him. Now, you both have studying to do. something wrong? No, no, Tim. You got a mighty funny look on your face. I, I guess I'm just happy. Come here. Me and you, Mom. And the General. We too are pioneers. We go into a world of bitterness and confusion. And certain forces tend to destroy the foundation. That's where we live when we first get there. While we're plebes. Then we get to be upperclassmen, they have to say sir to us, and anything we tell a plebe to do, he has to do. You've only got so much room for all your stuff, and you can't have a picture of your girl in your locker till you're an upperclassman. Why not? Oh, because you're not supposed to waste time thinking about girls. You got important things to think about. You live by the bugle. That's what it says in the yearbook. You live by the bugle. Hey there, get her! Julie, you know each other. Me and the little lady? <laughs> I hope to tell you. She came to us on house? Yeah, and I asked you where you were. She told me. I know that guy, too. That's your West Point buddy. Hi, Captain. Corporal. Lieutenant. Now make up your mind. What do you think of it? What? This. It's yours, Larry. Your dad bought it for your graduation present. Well, I already got a car. <laughs> that broke it down, hunk of tin. <laughs> I give a guy ten bucks to haul it away. <laughs> well, come on, get in. Hey. hey, Bill, next, 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 the back seat. Look at all the gadgets, huh? What do you start? There you are, the key. Start the job, man. Yeah. Is this the gadget? Yeah, right in front of you. Oh. You get it? Yep. 
Get them all in? All four of them. Good. If I don't get a prize for this, there ain't no justice. Boy, when this town wakes up tomorrow morning. My daughter and my son. But, Dad, we didn't know. Larry never told us. Of course he didn't tell you. Of course he didn't. Being what he is, he wouldn't. Maybe it isn't true. Newspapers make mistakes. Of course it's true. I always felt there was something wrong about that boy. What are you going to do, Roger? I'm going to see what can be done about this, this scum of the slums, this rotten racketeer sneaking into a respectable community, making a public spectacle of my son and daughter and a laughing stock of me. You can't blame Larry. I'll talk to you about this later. And sooner than have that man for my neighbor, I'll sell this house. And don't let me hear that either one of you have even been seen talking to this Kelly boy again. Oh, Stevens, isn't there something we can do to make this room more, more homey, more livable? If you please pardon me, madam, but my former employer had the furniture specially designed for this room and placed it himself. Oh. Well, there's always a kitchen. <coughs> I thought you'd like to see the morning paper. Oh, thank you, Stephen. Say, listen. What's the matter with them neighbors? I'm out in the backyard practicing the pup. See Mrs. Davis come out of back door. Says, morning, Mrs. Davis. Oh, I know, I know. I ain't been introduced. All the same, what course she got doing what she done? Just look at me. Ain't said a word. Runs back in the house like I got the measles or something. You listening? What's the matter? Boss racketeer. Often indicted, never convicted. Only action of this paper staff revealed true identity of Knuckles Kelly. The son, graduating as honor man of his class. I was afraid they'd find out. Why? Why have they done this to us? I retired. Quit. I'm going to come out here because Larry, my kid. They can't get away with this. Jim, there isn't anything you can do. Hey, you've been living away from me so long, maybe you forget how I operate. You can't. You mustn't. I'm going down and tear that newspaper apart. I'll get the lift. On, on business. Oh, I thought he retired. Well, this was special business. Oh. Now, hurry, will you be late to school? Larry, your father loves you. You're, you're everything in the world to him. Anything wrong? No, no, no. Now, now run along till you'll be late. Well, yeah, no, no, I, I hope nothing's wrong. I mean, everything's been so swell. What Milford residents will do or can do about Kelly's invasion is not known. He's generally known as a dangerous customer although he's never been connected with any definite crime. Hi, fellas. Hi, Eddie. What's the matter? Come on, what's the gag? I always said you'd make good. Larry!
Hey, Hugh. I just heard what you pulled on Larry Kelly. What about it? Hey, listen, Hugh. Better get smart, hadn't you? Sitting up for a racketeer, son, won't do you any good. Hey, wait. How did your dad get his money? Let go. My dad's a decent citizen. Char, he runs a bank. How does he make his money? He threw the Callahans out of their house last week because Mrs. Callahan's sick and Mr. Callahan not working just because they couldn't pay their mortgage. Maybe that doesn't make your dad so hot. He doesn't go around using a gun. No, he uses a fountain pen. Now you see, don't you, son, how you've been away from your father since you were a little boy. Is it all clear to you, Larry? No, I wish I'd have known. I wish you'd have told me. Oh, we were afraid it would handicap you. We wanted you to choose your own career, have your own start in life. All the splendid things you've done. You've accomplished them on your own. Did Dad use his political influence to get my chance at West Point? No, son. You got your appointment on your merit. That's the truth, Larry. Well, after five years, what does he suddenly want to see me for? Well, he wanted to see you graduate. He's so proud of you, he couldn't stay away. Oh, if I don't know. Oh, now you despise your father. You hate him. You mustn't. He had no advantages. People who have no advantages make their own code. Oh, don't hate him. Hate him, Mom? No. I've just been thinking how lonely he must have been these five years. Gosh, how'll I ever make it up to him? Gotta go back to school, Mom. Goodbye. Well, Mr. Benson, what do you intend to do about it? What do you think I should do? As principal of this school, responsible to the respectable citizens of this community for the welfare of their children, I fail to see to it the Kelly boy is valedictorian. The highest honor this school can award. He has been on a student in his classes for the past four years. Knuckles Kelly's son, as an example to the decent boys and girls in this school. What has Larry Kelly done? There seems to be no doubt what Knuckles Kelly is, or might have been. But I know what his son is, because I know the boy. His father, a bad character, sneaks into a respectable community, sneering at decency, spending his filthy money. Well, he is not responsible for his father's crime, unless you believe the sins of the father. Like father, like son. A heritage of vicious contempt for everything honest. One rotten apple in a Surely barrel. you don't believe that knowing Larry Kelly has hurt any boy or girl in this school? He's kept his father's ill fame a guilty secret. He wound his way into my home. For four years, he kept up a close association with my son and daughter. You're a big man in this community, Judge Davis. Aren't you too big to take this attitude towards a fine, ambitious boy? Is that all you have to say? No. Larry Kelly graduates next week, and I'm not going to take any action that will deprive him of anything he has earned. I see. Very well, Mr. Benson. Uh, Judge David, it was arranged some time ago that you were to make the honor awards to the students. I will be very sorry if you feel that you have to withdraw, but that you've got to decide for yourself. Good day, Mr. Benson. Sorry, Mr. Kelly. There's nothing we can do about it, nothing to retract. You can sue the paper if you desire, but... I don't sue. You lay off my family, or I'll show you how I operate. I told you the little. Now move out here. Buy this house. I want no trouble. I make no trouble. Glad you came to town, Knuckles. You're a great copy. Well, I listen to you. What you say, our friend. What you do, our friend. I hope you stay in Milford a long time. But I doubt if you will. Yeah? Who's making me leave? Now listen. I'm staying here, me, my wife, my kid. Anyone that hurts them, I'll settle with. Put that in your paper. Okay, Knuckles, I'll quote you. Mike, there'll be a new lead on Knuckles Kelly. All for it. Better make it an extra. Come in. How are you, Lawrence? Fine, Mr. Benson. Pretty tough today, isn't it? I saw the paper. Then you already know. Yes, Lawrence. You understand? What? Well, why I can't be valedictorian? People wouldn't like it. And so I just wanted to ask you why you would... Yes, Lawrence? Well, couldn't you just give me my diploma at the end of the week and let it go at that? You mean that 
people have made you feel like that in the school? No, no, I didn't mean that. But oh, do we have to talk about it? No, you've worked very hard for four years. You are one of the best men we've ever had in this school. Please, Mr. Benson, I know Lawrence. A West Point man never retires in the face of fire. You've never let anything stop you so far, neither in classes or football or anywhere else. Don't let it stop you now. Thank you, Mr. Blanchard. Larry, you've never been at my house. Why don't you come for supper tonight? No, not tonight, Selby, thanks. Oh, come on, Larry. My old man wants to meet you. You know something? My old man was a bootlegger, too. Hmm. I guess you figure that puts us both in the same place, huh? Well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I'll be seeing you. Contaminated? I won't take that from you. No, I didn't mean that. But you're getting a deal with your dad. Oh, I don't care about my dad. No, I don't say that. I got a lot of things to do. I'll see you later. All right. Oh, you swell. And Bill swell, but I'm poison. That's all there is to it. Go on, you better get out. No, please let me ride with you for a while. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's no go. You better get out. Somebody will see you. Come on. I'll see you in school. You are Tim Kelly? Yeah. I'm Edward Jameson. The DA. The district attorney, yeah. And this gentleman is... I the... know. Flatfoot cop. Well, what's the squawk? Kelly? Mr. Kelly. Very well, Mr. Kelly. I want to know just what you intend doing here in Milford. Is that all? That's all now, Mr. Kelly. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I've already done it. I buy this house. I live here. Me, my wife, my kid, I live here. I'm going to go on living here. I like living here. Ain't bother nobody. As long as nobody don't bother me. Now then, get out. I said get out. Hello, General. Hello, Pop. Kept you so late. Missed your dinner. Mom was worrying. Oh, I was out trying my new car on a country road. Had her up 74 in a second. Handles like a top. Too fast. Come on. Maybe you hear me talking to them guys that just went. 
That's the DA. I know. Sorry, General. Never thought things would turn out like this or I wouldn't have come. How'd your gal take it? You know, the little lady, Julie. Yeah, I messed that up too. Larry, me, I grew up in the street corner. Guy can't slug, he's out of luck. So I slugged him. That's how I got my start. That's the kind of a guy I am. Never wanted nothing but just the best for you. Thought I was doing big things for you. I should have known not to come out here. I wouldn't hurt you for anything in the world. You believe that? Put him up. Come on, put him up. There go. Come on. Jimmy. Oh. That's for you, Kelly. Okay, okay, General. See you later, Pop. Hi, Ma. Where were we for dinner? Oh, I had a lot of things to do. I'll come down and hit the icebox in a minute. for you and Larry. Never. Only quit the racket. You don't want me to. Move out here. Buy the house. For what? For you and the kid. I'm hurting the both of you. He had to know sometimes. Sure he had to know. Only he's got the wrong sentiment now. I always wanted to kind of... kind of look up to me. I think I was a swell guy. He hates me now. Oh, please, Tim. Molly, what have I done so wrong? I was a truck driver, sure. The best truck driver in Canal Street. You were the prettiest school teacher in the district. Didn't have no chance with you. You married me. Because I loved you. Sure. I gotta settle down. Be something big. For you, Molly. Then you tell me Larry's come up. You're gonna get out and get dough. Get it the only way I can. Slug. I get it. Take over this. Take over the union. Take over the whole town. For what? Just for you and the kid. Tim. I run breweries. Tain't leave then. Tis now so who's wrong, me or then. Tim, you don't understand it. Didn't want him to go up around me. Neither did I. I'm sure I could have said stay here with me, but I didn't. Think it's any fun all these years living alone without him? Without you? I know it wasn't, Tim. I said okay. Wanted him brought up at swell people. So did I. I wanted him to be somebody. Better than his old man. So did I. And my kid, too. Oh, Tim. They can't keep him out of West Point anyhow. I fixed that all right. I pull a lot of wires to get my kid appointed, but he's set. I've got to tell you sometime, Tim. Larry isn't going to West Point on the appointment that you got for him. Oh, go on, Molly. I know what I fix. I didn't want Larry to have anything he didn't earn. He got his appointment here from a congressman who didn't even know Larry had a father. And I don't fix that. No, Tim, you see. Yeah. Yeah, Molly, I see. We too are pioneers. We go into a world of confusion and bitterness. A world of confusion and bitterness. Where certain forces tend to destroy the foundation of our nation. Where crime in all its guises. Where crime in all its guises. Is rampant.
we too are pioneers. We go into a world of bitterness and confusion. Where certain forces seek to destroy the foundation of our nation. Where crime in all its guises is rampant. But we go into the world well armed because of what our forefathers died to win for us. And we have learned how our forefathers died to make this true. That in this nation we have as our birthright what boys and girls in other nations may be denied. An education, our training as good and loyal citizens, our birthright and our burden. But we know we must pay for what we are given. Pay by being citizens who will protect and perpetuate the institutions upon which this nation was founded. How shall we pay the pioneers the debt we owe? By defending the law they gave us. By keeping the faith they kept. We will fight the good fight. We will keep the faith. On behalf of this graduating class, I thank you all. The mothers and fathers who have sacrificed more than we'll ever know to give us this day. I thank you. Come on, let's get out of here. Our esteemed citizen, Judge Davis, will now make the presentation. Uh, Judge Davis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and members of this graduating class, at this time it becomes my <clears throat> duty to make certain special awards. The Scholarship Book Award for the highest four-year average maintained by any graduating student of this class to Lawrence Timothy Kelly. The Simmons Trophy for athletic prowess and good sportsmanship to Lawrence Timothy Kelly. Miss Gertrude Lennox. Is that? Sure. Sure there's a party. Your gal, Bill, all the kids you go to school with. You ain't there. Why not? Because your old man's Knuckles Kelly. Oh, come on now, Pop. Forget it, will you? Forget it? What? Mom, I got a lot of studying to do. I'll see you later. All right. Now, wait a minute. Him. Larry really has some work to do. When I'm around, he gets all kind of frozen up. Oh, sure he's nice. Like he was sorry for me. He don't need me. He never needed me. He needs you. Wish your mother good night. Oh, I was coming down. Good night, honey. Good night. Listen, I'm glad Dad was there today. He was swell. Yes, son. We'll work things out somehow.
Do you really mean this, Dad? I wouldn't put up a sign if I didn't. I don't like the way you're acting, William. Well, I don't like... Well, all right, but I hope no one buys our house just the same. Perhaps no one will, as long as Knuckles Kelly is the next door neighbor. What is it? I got a letter for Larry. Yes? It's very important. I don't know you. Well, see here, young man. What is it, Stephen? Someone with a letter for Master Lawrence, then. I'll take the letter. I'm his mother. You? You're Larry's mom? Gosh. Some turned you sippy victim to squall. That's my name. You ask Larry. Stephen, will you get my purse, please? Please, ma'am. Larry's a friend of mine. I'm sorry. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Squalid spaghetti? What an extraordinary name. Little boy just brought this letter to you. Thanks. Excuse me, Mom. Mm -hmm. Larry Kelly, private, secret, and confidential. What is this? That's what it says, Mom. Secret and confidential. Oh. But Larry, you won't. Don't worry, Mom. Nothing's going to happen to me. All right. Kelly, prepare to meet your fate. Listen, Jay, hey, it's quiet. Lawrence Kelly, you have been tried and found guilty by the members of the AJV in solemn conclave, solemnly assembled. You have been found guilty of absenting yourself from the presence of your fellow members, of forgetting a sacred oath which binds us in the mystic brotherhood. Fellow members of the AJV, what punishment shall be visited upon Lawrence Kelly? The Siberian torture. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just because your old man got his name in the papers. As if we're not good enough for you, not your famous. And ever since graduation day, you ran out on us. Yeah, nobody's seen you since. Yeah, we all miss you. And you've been ducking orchestra practice. You know you're the only hot drum we've got. No, it's no good, fellas. Your families don't like my dad, so that means they don't like me. I don't want to get you in trouble, but really, I'm here. I'll be seeing you around. But they don't know. Do we know. You betcha. And you're coming to the beach club dance tonight if we all have to come and drag you there. You'll be there even if I have to knock your ears off. You better show up, too. Yeah, and if my sister doesn't dance with you, I'll punch her right in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> Mine, too, both of them. Come on, let's get right up here. Get them putting up, Nick. Oh, my God. Hey, Mom. Mom. Why, Larry, what on earth is you? Hey, Mom, I just had the smallest time I've had in years. What? I gotta get my drum. What?
are, sir. Hello. It's a nice party, isn't it? Have you been dancing? Uh-uh. May I dance with you? Well, of course. Why hadn't you asked me before? No. Hello. What's the matter? I told you I wasn't going to stand around all night while you played the drums. Oh, Jules, you're ready to take over. Come on, let's dance. I promised off. Yeah. But I didn't say which dance. Yeah. Go ahead and get your name in the paper. Come on. Play one for me, will you, fellas? Number 23. Okay. 23. One, two. Didn't I ever tell you about it? Oh, it's been a tradition for years. Ever since the academy was founded. After you become a real cadet, your girl can come and see you. Then, if you and your girl go walking down this particular walk, why, it's the same as, well, everybody thinks you're engaged. And when you graduate, if you're a top honor man, the girl becomes queen of West Point for the day. Then you have to kiss her right in front of everybody. Yet. Why not? Oh, I know what my father has planned for me. Finishing school, coming out parties. Then he'll pick a husband for me from the social register. That'll happen if you believe it. You gotta believe in yourself if you expect to get what you want from this world. Oh, it's different with a man. He can get away from his parents' influence. They come from a different school. You gotta find ways to teach them. And be patient. It takes time. Oh, come on, give me it. All right, Brody. There, I'm first. Chiggers. Then come back if you don't mind being with me. Oh, forget it. Come on, come on, let's go. Hey, let me drive, Larry. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Well. You know how to work it? Sure. Boy, it is a swell. Why couldn't I have a car like this? No, it's luxury. Bad for my morals or something. That's such a narrow mind. Oh, don't be knocking your dad. He's a fine man and citizen. Otherwise, he wouldn't be where he is. He shouldn't be where he is. He can judge you by, by your... my dad's past. Yeah, but I know. Hey, look out. You want to wreck us? Well, just the same, he's making sneaks out of us. Right now, we have to stop a block away and sneak home so we won't be seen with you. Oh, you're both spoiling the whole party now. Maybe your folks are right. Maybe the world has to be divided into upper and lower classes. Maybe you have to be born to the purple. Fine talk from the Yankees. Well, anyway, you can't make over your folks in a minute. Look how long it took us to learn. Blue blood. Blah. Forget it. Get old acquaintance be forgot and never wrong to mind. Get old acquaintance. Look out! Hey, there's people coming. Come on, you 
can get out of here. But Larry! Right, right, home and hurry up. Stay home. Whose car is that? Mine. You driving? Yes. Have your license. Let him alone, you. How did it happen? He came out of that driveway and it was so dark I couldn't help it. I hit him. Oh, yeah? How fast were you going? About 40. You sure it was 40? Yes, sir. That's your name? Lawrence Timothy Kelly? Yes. Any relation to Knuckles Kelly? He's my father. Well, hello, Jim. Well, why don't you get an ambulance or a doctor or something? Who are you? That's the driver. Knuckles Kelly's kid. Here, Mike. I found this in the car. It's belong to you. What to do in your car? I don't know how it got there. Okay, come on. All right, come on, bring it up. Show's over. Come on. Nobody at the beach club, Mom. The dance is over. Get you staying all night with some pal. Mom's go to bed and quit worrying. Larry, I never stayed out this late before. Never. Well, the kid's grown up, ain't he? What are you worrying about? Oh, well, I'm not worrying. That car. Oh, Mom, don't don't tell me I've done wrong about that too. Ain't it bad enough already? I feel bad without feeling bad about that, too. Larry's a good driver, ain't he? Ain't he? Yes, yes, Tim. Uh, we'll feel fine if he comes in, catches us waiting up for him. He's a man. Now relax, Mom, relax. There he is. Hello, hello. Yeah, Kelly speaking. Your boy asked me to call you. And so I'm calling. He ran over a kid. Speeding. Had a bottle in the car. And the kid he hit may die. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Why is it a bit boy? Yeah. Thanks, Sergeant. Yeah, goodbye. Larry. Yeah. Larry's okay. Tell me. He's arrested for speed. Now, that's all. Oh, Tim. He's in jail. I'll go down and bail him out. Oh. That's nothing to worry about. Kids is arrested for speeding all the time. Now, give him a good talking to so it don't happen again. I'm going with you. No, you ain't. You're going to bed. Hey, you. You got my kid in here. You mean the Kelly kid? You heard me. How much is his bail? I said how much. No bail. Now listen, you. He's held on an open charge now. It depends whether or not the kid he hit dies. You don't get him out of here until he's charged and is arraigned in court. I'm taking my kid home, so get him out of here. You'll get nowhere getting tough with me, Kelly. He ain't gonna run away. Just wanna take him home to his mother. I'm going to take him home if I have to bust this two-by-four jail wide open. You're not taking your kid out on bail until I get an order from the district attorney. His mother don't know what he's in for. I'm trying to keep it from her. Think we'll do him harm if I take him home? He'll be back when he's wanted. Here. Any part of it. Ah, you're making it awful tough. I didn't drive the car that hit that kid, Kelly. Can I talk to him? I guess so. Thanks, Sergeant. Well, are you coming or not? Here's a visitor. Hello, General. Hi, Pop. Come on in. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of funny my scene come on in here, isn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, you kind of got yourself in a jam, ain't you? Yeah. Does Mom know about it, Dick? None at all of it. You're gonna break your mother's heart. How fast was you going? 40 miles an hour. Come on, come on. How fast were you going? In 40, honest, Dad. Sergeant says they find a bottle in your car. I don't know how it got there. You ain't never had a drink in your life, have you? Never. Well, whose bottle was it? I don't know. Someone with you? So there was someone with you. I don't think you was even driving that car. You're covering up for somebody. You're taking a rap for somebody. Let us suddenly make a sap out of you. Now's the time for you to talk and talk fast. 
Well, Dad, I told you all I can tell you. Larry, you know what it means to get a jail sentence for this, even 60 days for reckless driving? It means you can't never get into West Point. You know that, don't you? Oh, maybe I don't want to go to West Point. Oh, you quick, man! Who's driving that car? Dad, I told you all I can tell you. I'll make you talk to me. Who's driving that car? I told you. Will you talk to me? I can't. Don't talk. I'm sorry I done that. Yeah, forget it. I'll get you out of this. I'll get you out quick. You leave it to me. Yes, May I read it? I want you to read it. I want you both to read it. I want you to realize how close you came to being involved in some scandal that would shame your mother and me because you insisted that boy was the right sort of friend. Dad! Now, we'll not discuss Lawrence Kelly in this house again. Finish your breakfast. Mother. I know. Have you seen the morning paper? Yes. Won't you come in? I'm sorry for you, Mrs. Kelly. I can't believe what the paper says. I know my boy doesn't drink. He's a careful driver. I thought if you'd help him, Judge Davis. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do. But this means if they send Larry to prison. Oh, you know, Judge Davis, you must know from your son how hard Larry's would. He's a good boy. Please. There's nothing I can do. I'm sorry I bothered you, Judge Davis. Did you have to talk to Mrs. Kelly like that? I thought I told you we would not discuss the Kelly family. You're not being fair. Fair? Have you and Julia been fair to me and your mother? Associating with the racketeer's son. Going behind my back to be with a boy who has finally shown that he has all the vicious, worthless, despicable traits of his father. And in spite of my warnings, you spent the whole evening with the Kelly boy last night at the dance. Yes, and I'm not ashamed. I don't care what you say about Larry. I know him and he isn't what you say is he isn't. I think you'd better go to your room. What's the use? We can't talk to you. We can't tell you anything. We're not supposed to know. Will you? Mother, gee whiz. Can't we even go down and see Larry? I know your father wouldn't approve of that. And your father's always right. Well, I'm going anyway. Go on. You stay out of this. Well, I had as much to do with it oh. as you did. It's not. Larry Kelly. Please. Well, who are you? I, I'm, I'm Bill Davis, and she's my sister, and, and Judge Roger Davis is our father. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe I'd better talk to him about it. It's huh? all right, really. We were in school with Larry. Oh, you are, huh? All right, I'll take your word for it. Come on, follow me. Right through that gate there. Come on. Okay, go on in. Talk all you want, or I'll be down the other end of the corridor. What are you 
two doing here? We have to come. Does your dad know you're here? Not yet. You. Well, you got no business bringing Julie here. I told you last night I could handle this. Yeah, and look what happened. Oh, I think you've been reading the paper. Yes, I'm so of you. Well, maybe I like publicity. Larry! You're not fooling anybody. You're just taking a rap from me like you always have in school, football, class, and everything. I'm not going to let you do it. Take him home, will you, Julie? No. Bill, you're only making it tough for everybody. But I was driving the car, you were. Shh. Shouldn't go around telling lies like that, Bill. That's bad. I get you. I was driving the car and neither one of you were there, you understand? What are you trying to do? I've already done it. I've told the truth, it's in the papers. You know, Julie knows. Look, Bill, you've got some idea. Now go on, go on, tell somebody. You know what'll happen? Yeah, I'll go to jail and you'll get out. Oh, no. Because I'll tell them you're lying because you feel sorry for me. Oh, Larry. They'll believe me. But I didn't know I was there. Julie, understand. Bill has to go to West Point, doesn't he? You know what'll happen if he doesn't do what your dad wants him to? With me, it's different. Why? Why is it different? You want to go to West Point, too. You belong there a whole lot more than I do. Oh, I got other things I can do. I did a lot of talking about West Point. That was before I knew who my dad was. Oh, you're just saying all this. I'm going to have a lot of money someday. And, and well, maybe I don't belong in the Army anyhow. I can, I can go in business for myself and... And anyway, don't you ever tell anybody you were driving that car. Because it can't help me, and it'll only hurt you. And finish it with your dad, for life. Now go on, go home, both of you. Go on, go home. Oh, Harry. Look, Julie, I can take this and not get hurt. And Bill can. Now don't you worry about me. Go on. Go home. Go home. Go home. Hey, Sergeant. Throw him out of here, will you? Go on. Kelly. You know what I'm here for? Well, sit down. I want to put a bail for my kid. You've had experience in cases like this before, haven't you, Mr. Kelly? This is my kid. He's a good kid. You can look up his record. In on the wrong thing in his life. He's gone to West Point. It ain't right to keep a kid like that in jail. There's only an open charge against him now. The boy he hit was very badly hurt. All right, I'll all the damages. Doctors, hospitals, anything. I gotta take that kid home to his mother. I can't release him from jail. I can't take any action until we know what is going to happen to the boy who was run over. Now listen, Mr. Denton, you come to my house one night, I get tough with you. All right, what do you want me to do? I'll go, I'll move out, I won't come back. If that's what you want. I gotta get that kid out of jail. Ain't right to take it out of him because of me. Maybe you got a kid of your own. My son played left end on the team with your son. All right, then ask him, he'll tell you. My boy Larry's the best there is. Oh, me. All right, all right, all right. I find out what I am. Larry, Larry's different. Mr. Kelly, I don't like seeing any boy in trouble. And the fact that he's your son doesn't alter my feelings. But there's nothing I can do now. That's all I can say. What you're going to say. Your son will have every chance the law can give him. That's all you got to say. Well, I try to play it your way. Mr. Kelly, you're not here for me. Mr. Jameson, hadn't we better have someone keep an eye on him? We'll see what happens first. I want enough from Davis Jameson's whole setup so they'll come crawling to me. Oh, that's easy. All right. Oh, Tim, anything goes, eh? I want my boy out of jail by tomorrow night. Well, that gives us plenty of time. Nice to be with you again, Tim. Well, hello, Mrs. Kelly. Well, do you remember, Sammy? Well, I haven't seen you in a long time. You know the boys. I know all of you. Too bad about the kid, but don't you worry. We've got everything under control. Jim, I think you'd better ask him to step outside so we can settle something. Now, you keep out of this. Wait outside for a few minutes.
tried everything else first. Did you? Yeah. Try to be nice. First time in life I ever asked a favor of a cop. What are you getting? Larry's still in jail. And I want him to stay there. I'd rather have Larry go to prison for life than have him get his freedom through men like Sammy Tripp. Your men. Fix him. Blackmail him. That's enough of that. Oh, no, Tim Kelly. That isn't enough. You're going to hear the rest of it. And you're going to listen. You're going to listen to me. I've stood by you, Tim Kelly, all these years. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I'm more to blame than you are for what's happened to Larry. It's too late to know now. But you've done enough to my boy. You've hurt him enough. Don't do any more. Don't. You let my boy alone. You hear? You finally told me, Mom, didn't you? Come in. I'm waiting, Tim. Get the first plane out of town. You mean you're calling it off? Change my mind, beat it. going to hear Larry's case this morning? I am. You don't have to. There are other judges. And have people say I'm afraid to do my duty because Knuckles Kelly is the boy's father? If you'd only listen. I'll not listen to anything more about Lawrence Kelly. I told you what he'd say. I don't know what's going on in there. Maybe the whole thing's a frame up because of me. If you'd let me, well, why didn't you get him a lawyer yourself? He doesn't want one. You, uh, you weren't drinking? No, sir. Not even one? Not one. Uh, what was served at the dance? Uh, fruit punch and ice cream. Rather weak refreshment for you, isn't it? No, sir. I've never had anything from it. How fast will your car go? I've had her up to 80. Did you have her up to 80 that night? Not over 40 miles an hour. Who was with you? Was there someone in the car with you? Not when I was arrested. No, I didn't ask you that. Was there anyone in the car at the time you ran down that boy? Larry, I promised your father I'd see that you had an impartial hearing. You refused legal advice. Now, unless you answer the judge's questions and clear yourself, you'll be held for trial. It's obvious he's not telling the truth. He's concealing the facts. If you weren't drinking, who was? Are you ashamed to name your companions? Were they drunk? Have they got Larry in there? Yeah. You and Mrs. Kelly had better come in with us. I think you would like to hear what William Davis has to say. Come in. Good morning, Roger. Oh, how are you, Howard? Well, pardon this intrusion, Judge, but your son and daughter have something to say that has a bearing on this case. They seem to be afraid to tell it to you, so Judge Henderson suggested that we come here with him. Do you mind, Roger? Not at all, Howard. Now, William, I want you to repeat your story as you told it to me. Julie, you'd better start. We were in the car when the accident happened. Larry wasn't driving, Bill was. Yeah, and we asked Larry to drive us home. It was getting late and we knew Father'd be angry. And Larry let me drive the car. Were you driving when the boy was hit? Yes, sir, but I, I couldn't help it. I couldn't, I couldn't even see him. He came out of the dark. Don't believe him. He's lying. I'm not lying, and I want to talk, Larry. You're taking the blame for me. You've taken it all through high school. 
He knew what my father would say. He knew it would hurt my chances for West Point. Oh, he's making it all up. You can't stop me this time. You see, when it happened, Larry wanted to protect us. He made us run away. He said it would ruin our reputation because we were somebody, and it wouldn't hurt him because he was nobody. Maybe our parents think that, but we don't. Well, this exonerates Larry Kelly completely. But Bill, it puts you in a pretty tough spot. Howard, I'd like to request time to obtain counsel for my boy. There's just one more question I'd like to ask. Bill, how did that liquor get in the car? I don't know. Honest, I don't. I'm going to tell. I did it, sir. I had the bottle, and we saw a policeman coming, and I threw it. It landed in Larry's car. Are all your students honor students? It appears that way. <laughs> what is the condition of the injured boy? The boy's all right. I got a hospital report before coming here. And the family say that they will not prosecute. I move for a dismissal. I agree. Larry Kelly? I'm proud of you. The whole city's proud of you. You've proved yourself a man. And Bill, you've learned a great lesson in friendship. You two boys ought to make fine soldiers. The Army needs men like you. Your Honor, can I say something? Go ahead, Mr. Kelly. It was just this. I ain't spoken to courtroom before. Honor, have a mouthpiece. Do the talking for me. Ain't that much use for justice. But you're all right. You're all swell people. You're proud of my kid. I want him to grow up to be like you. I ain't making no more trouble. I'm clearing out. Knuckles Kelly is true. Hey, hey Pa. Take the luggage upstairs. Yes, ma'am. You're not going. Wait a minute. Oh, yes, I am. You hear what I tell the judge? Then we're going with you. Oh, Molly, you're sitting pretty, just like you was before I come out. Now, if I go to West Point, we can all go. You can live right nearby. I wouldn't fit in any more than I do here. But don't worry, kid. I'll read about you when you make the team. Goodbye, Molly. No, nothing doing. Now, Stephen's upstairs. Hey, wait a minute. Now, Dad, you don't have to go anyplace. Larry, I'm so proud of you. Aren't you, Mr. Kelly? Oh, Mrs. Kelly, I... I'm afraid this is very unneighborly. But I do hope we'll see a lot of each other from now on. Thank you. What did I tell you? Now, take good care of Mom. No, no, Pop, no. Smoke? <laughs> come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. What are we all standing here for? Larry, let's have a party. Let's have a party. You know, I've been wanting to throw a party ever since I've been out here. Molly, take them all in the living room. Come on. Hello. Hello. Kelly speaking. Yeah, Tim Kelly. There's somebody over the finest grip you got in the joint. Plenty of it. And a gang of waiters. Sure, have a party. Get me the finest orchestra in town, too. Unless if you don't hurry that stuff up, I'll come down there and tear that dump apart. <laughs> well, come on, the judge. <laughs> Where are the girls? <laughs> Remember me? 